to It's a Fulbright Friday with your co-host LP and LT. Well, it's been it's been a good end of the July month. I know you've had too much. <laughs> you literally, it's already been a long summer. We're into August, and I'm speaking about Okay, so July guys, month. LP just got back from vacation. I She's did. not all here right now. Yeah. She's still on Mountain Time. Uh, so yeah, did you have fun? I did because Colorado is so wonderful. But getting there was a was a bit tricky. Oh yeah, what happened? Um, so I think as I get older, I become more anxious about flying, which mm -hmm. I'm like still not anxious to the level mm -hmm. of my mom. But um, it's yeah. still something that where you like if no, anything gets shaky or anything, it makes you nervous. Yeah. So we're flying into Denver International Airport, mm -hmm. um, and we're we come so close to the ground, and then all of a sudden we veer up. Oh god! Like where you're supposed to be landing. I always, I always look at the um, flight attendants. If they show fear, that's the problem. <laughs> well, so that's the thing. They like? So we like, so we go up really quickly, and everybody around clearly oh, knew no. something was wrong. Like, why do you like? You're basically like 20 yeah. feet off the ground, no, and you're going like again. And so then we like, uh, like veer right, and then eventually, and we're like still turning around and like clearly coming around to make it like try this again. And the flight attendant comes on and says something about. How uh, we have to, or we have to redo the landing, or something. Like I don't know exactly what the terminology uh -huh, was, uh -huh. but clearly someone messed up, or something uh -huh. was happening uh -huh. that we weren't supposed to be there at that moment. Yeah. And they were trying to be a bit positive about it, but yeah, like we're gonna try that again. Right. But just you know, land, yeah, you know, not land, yeah. whatever. Take yeah. a circle. We're, we're, coming circle in, the we're coming in to land a second time. I would complain. And get a refund. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would try to get something out of that. Like yeah. seriously, you probably lost years of your life, and every time you like take off and land, now you probably have PTSD from that. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I already I'm kind of morbid about landing. Like, yeah. I, do you ever do the thing where you like think about like if the plane crashed now? What would yes. I do? Like, <laughs> would I survive or not right. if it crashed? Yeah. Okay. If it crashed now, if it crashed now, like, would I live? Would I live? Would yeah. I die? Would I live? Yeah. yeah. And, and then, then like when it like, touches, you're like, I think oh, I'd be okay. Yes. Like, I think being in this machine. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. Anybody else do that? I mean, or maybe we're just really morbid. I don't know. I think it's all about like safety and security. Right. Or I do that all the time. Or like on your lips. Yeah. I always think both Okay, don't do that on your lips. Well. Escalators? Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay, so basically our social media room is under construction. So if you happen to be interested in joining us next year in application season, whether or not you just want to keep the... Hanging out with us. Hanging out with us. We totally, even if you're abroad and on a Fulbright, you can totally come back and subscribe. Uh, we have big things planned for next year, but right now we're under construction, so this would be the moment where we're talking about social media, but now we're not. All that now to we're say, talking about timelines. Let's just talk about timelines, because we're getting to that moment where people are getting like, oh my goodness, what do I need to do? I know I need to be doing something, and now I'm getting a lot of information from my Fulbright program advisors about timelines and deadlines, and I don't know how to make sense of it. So now we're going to make sense of a very important deadline, and what's that one? Well, we're going to talk about essay draft review because okay. now as we move into August, people obviously are um, producing the rough drafts of their essays. So what's important to understand is that if you have a meeting scheduled for a time in August, you need to send your drafts 24 hours in advance of the meeting so that we have time to review them and can use that meeting time to discuss your essays. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So at this point, if you want essay feedback but you can't get an appointment because there are no more, they don't fit your schedule, or maybe you've already met with us and really you just want essay feedback. We're also doing essay feedback outside of sitting down on one-to-one -one appointments. So if you're in a case where you think it would be helpful just to get some kind of communicated like um, email feedback, then go ahead and send your drafts in and let us know that's what you're interested in. Yes, and you will be entered into our queue, mm -hmm. and we will get to your essays when we get to them. So don't write back asking about when mm -hmm. uh, you should expect to receive your essays. But if you're just emailing without an appointment, which mm -hmm. is fine, um, and attaching your drafts, you will enter our queue, and we'll get to your drafts when yeah. we get to them and send you that feedback. Provided that you are sending them as early as possible, because obviously as we get um, closer to September 1st, we have more and more people who are seeking feedback and our ability to respond in a timely manner will probably decrease. Yeah. So it's probably where you're seeing some confusion about the August 1st. That is a deadline that we kind of put in to help get everybody focused on getting their drafts in as soon as possible, so that way most folks can have a chance at getting feedback from us. Mm -hmm. So yes, September, sorry, yes, August 1st has now passed, but yes, we're still collecting drafts. Get them in as soon as possible. It's our favorite time. Our and your Fulbright favorite time. fan club section. Okay, so where's our, here we go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. bum -da -da. Who's drawing? Uh, I may have drawn last time, so let me hold it. Oh, 
Okay, I'll draw. I'm excited. Mm, here we go. Okay. Ah! What is your favorite, most indulgent comfort food? Hmm. <laughs> well, some days I'm just in the mood for macaroni and cheese, and I wish I had lobster to add to that. But you can add lobster to it. It's your. It's yeah, your but then you have to like food. pay forty additional dollars. To this get, is like, a not a practical food. thing. This oh, is this like, is the most yeah. indulgent. Okay, yeah, so indulgent like in terms of like what okay. you want. Right. Like it's gonna what be you so want, good. Like want to have the lobster on the mac so and cheese. So lobster mac and cheese. I'm not a fan oh, of lobster. And there, what? Yep. I know, I like a lot of things that do not like lobster. Oh my gosh. No. Like being in New England for like 12 years. Yeah. Lobster rolls and lobster you. just, mmm. Like shrimp and lobster. What about What's the breadcrumbs on the mac and cheese? Not so much. I just want my really? mac and cheese and I want some like chunks of lobster, not like cheating mm -hmm. and just giving you like little scraps. Yeah. yeah. What's okay. your ultimate, ultimate comfort food? Yeah, so I guess we can go like, I'm really a sweet person. <laughs> Um, I like <laughs> myself. Up. I like chocolate and ice cream and all that. So that's like if I'm gonna go, you know, big or go home, I'm probably gonna have some sort of like really sugary thing. But I think comfort food. I'm thinking like down home cooking. Mm. So what I really like, like that's fried like chicken? yeah, things like that, right? Mm -hmm. In that category, I'm gonna have to say, and this is only made from a specific recipe, so it's not just any. But chicken and dumplings. Do you know what this is? Oh yes. You'll, she doesn't know what it is. Okay, what do you Wait, think? Remind me. Dumpling? Remind me what chicken dumpling okay, is. Okay, so basically it's like a kind of like a stew, right? Made with, but it's really not a stew. It's basically like a thick kind of broth with shredded chicken and biscuits, kind of like okay. a biscuit doughy, kind of yeah. cooked, kind of not cooked all the way, but it's like kind of done in a soupy thing and it's just really like indulgent because it's like carbs and chicken. Mm. See, that may be bearing too close to like chicken pot pie, which I don't like. It's close to that, so you probably wouldn't like I it. I wouldn't like it. Yeah. I know you're supposed to like chicken pot pie, but I like never got over like, like why? a goopy mess. Yeah, then you really would not like Because it's like the but innards. I like shepherd's pie. That's a goopy mess. Yeah, but it's better than chicken pot pie. There's something about like the chicken, like whatever sauce. It's not, I guess it's yeah, not really sauce. it's just like sauce. a it's just liquid. Mushy. I just don't like yeah. mushiness. Yeah, because macaroni and cheese isn't just laden in mushiness. But it's a different kind of mushy. Assuming like that cheese the, mushy is okay. Assuming that the noodles are cooked al dente. Okay. Yeah. So what if I put macaroni and cheese in a pastry? That would just be odd. I don't want it like a pastry. That's, a, that's why I don't want the breadcrumbs on it. You don't like pastry? The, no, I love pastry, but it needs to be in its own separate space. in the sweet space. category for you? Like what about a pasty? You know pasties? Oh yeah, I like pasties. Mm, they're good. Mm. Like all in a pocket, meat yeah. in a pocket. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's like fine. Thing. I don't know what it is about chicken pot pie. Maybe that's just the, yeah. the one exception. Yes, she prefers lobster mm -hmm. with her diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like who are these people? I don't know. <laughs>